There are three methods of heat transfer. Conduction, convection, and radiation. Heat is all around us every second of our lives. While we may not realize it, heat transfer is extremely relevant in all of our lives. That's right, the heat isn't just there, it's constantly moving. But how does heat transfer exactly work? Let's take a look. that deals with the movement of a liquid or gas. This may seem complicated, but it's a method of heat transfer that's really not too complicated at all. The key thing to remember when thinking about convection is movement. Conduction is the transfer of heat by direct contact. It's as simple as it sounds, touching something and heat transferring between two objects. For example, if I touch a hot plate or pot, I'm going to feel the heat because I'm touching it. It's direct contact and it's conduction. Radiation is a transfer of heat through indirect contact, so not touching. It's basically heat traveling through air or space. Radiation is very common because it's the primary method of heat transfer we think of when we're talking about fire or the sun. Probably two of the first things that come to mind when you think about heat. So let's take a look at a few different examples of heat transfer and all three ways. We'll start in a familiar place, the kitchen. So here in the kitchen, we have a very ordinary site, a pot of boiling water. This pot represents conduction because the pot is on the heat element, in this case, a gas-fed fire, and that's what's heating up the water. And although the water may be doing something else, which we'll talk about a little later, the way the pot is getting heat is through conduction, direct contact with the fire and the metal grate. In a standard dwelling, you're probably gonna have some form of heating system to keep you warm in the winter months. My house and a lot of other modern houses have a heating system that represents some heat transfer convection. Like I said before, convection is the form of heat transfer that deals with movement and often cycles. So in this case, the cool air in my house sinks to the floor. It's pulled in by a few vents that are near the floor that bring it into the furnace. It's heated, it's a, it, there may be a different form of heat transfer going on in there, that's besides the point. And then it is blown out through vents in the, on the walls or even on the ceiling. It heats up my house, and then once the air gets cold, it sinks back down, goes into the vents, gets heated, and it becomes a cycle. This is what we call a convection current. And, and my heating system and many others deals with convection. Now place in a house that we can find radiation, you're probably gonna say the microwave. And while it's all over the place, let's talk about that because that's probably the number one thing you think of when I tell you radiation. So you all know what microwave popcorn is. You probably have it every, every time you wanna just sit down and have a family movie or just a quick snack. But how does the popcorn magically go into the microwave? You hit go and it magically pops and heats up. In a microwave's case, it's radio waves being sent through the air, which is still kind of like radiation because it's going through the air. It makes the water and food vibrate very quickly at an atomic level, and then it causes it to, in the popcorn, burst or heat up. Now the ocean is a very good example of heat transfer, and you might think, oh, the ocean is really cold, especially up here in New Jersey. But it is actually one of the best ways we can demonstrate convection, conduction, and radiation. Let's start with convection. The sun heats the ocean mostly at the equator, although everything gets sunlight, the direct area that gets the most sunlight is right at the equator. And because of the Earth's shape and how it rotates, the water starts to rise because it's warmer, and it rises up and rises up and rises up. And it also goes down, and it forms a circle, and as it goes up or down, it gets cooler because it's away from the equator, and then it comes back to the equator to be heated up again. And this just keeps going in a cycle, and that's another instance of a convection current. And the oceans also have radiation because the way the ocean is being heated is by radiational heat from the sun, indirect contact. And of course, conduction because the ocean heats up the land around it because it's direct contact with a warmer body, or in this case, a colder body, but heat can transfer in both ways, so it's conduction. Weather is another good example that we can find heat transfer all over the place in. Let's say you're at the beach and it's a very sunny day out. The heat that you're feeling is radiational heat from the sun, like we talked about before how the ocean gets heated. Your body's heated in the same way. It's indirect contact with sun waves that are hot coming from the sun. Now let's say you go outside on a cold day and you don't have a jacket on. Your heat is going to be taken away because of convection. The warm air escapes from your body into the air and the cool air comes in, so the heat is being taken away in the process of convection because there's no direct contact. Now as far as conduction, let's say it's snowing and you feel a snowflake hit your hand. It's gonna feel cold because your body is warmer than the snowflake. 
as we all know, our bodies maintain a temperature of about 98.6 degrees, and a snowflake's gonna be in the low 30s. When you feel the cold from the snowflake, it's the process of heat transfer conduction, because it's direct contact. The snowflake is directly on your skin. Now, another kind of sciencey example of how heat transfer works is in plate tectonics, or in other words, things that cause earthquakes. So there's magma in the core of the Earth, the middle of the Earth. And it heats up and expands and rises to the top of the mantle, which is the outer layer of the inner layer, basically, of the Earth. And as the magma spreads out beneath the plates, the plates are dragged apart and move apart from each other, which causes seafloor spreading. This relates to convection because it's a cycle of hot magma going up and down when getting hotter and colder. Plate tectonics also represent conduction because the heat from the core heats up the mantle, and that's what makes the plates move apart. And as far as radiation goes, the core has lava, which is radiational heat. So now that I've told you about a few examples, let's take a more fun route and do a quick experiment. Hey.